The Omo One fossil, discovered in Ethiopia, is one of the most significant discoveries in the study of early human evolution. This fossil, commonly known as Omo One, is significant because it contains some of the earliest evidence of anatomically modern Homo sapiens. Omo One's history is full of scientific breakthroughs, evolving interpretations, and controversies that continue to shape our understanding of human origins. This video will look at the discovery of Omo One, the skull reconstruction, the reanalysis of the pelvis that revealed it was a female, her estimated height and body mass, and the ongoing debates about the fossil's dating and significance. Because Omo One is one of the oldest known anatomically modern Homo sapiens fossils, dating back approximately 200,000 years, this places her contemporaneous with the theoretical mitochondrial Eve, which will be discussed at the end of the video. As a result, Omo One is a direct physical representation of the population from which mitochondrial Eve would have evolved. Omo One establishes a tangible link to the ancient population from which all modern humans descend. Her presence in the fossil record lends credibility to the abstract genetic concept of mitochondrial Eve by providing tangible evidence of early humans who lived in East Africa during the Pleistocene. In 1967, a team led by renowned paleoanthropologist Richard Leakey made a groundbreaking discovery along the Omo River in southern Ethiopia. The Omo Kibish Formation has long piqued paleontologists' interest due to its abundance of ancient sedimentary layers that record millions of years of Earth's history. During their excavations, Leakey's team discovered two hominid fossils, which they named Omo I and Omo II. These fossils would go on to be some of the most important pieces of evidence for the study of early modern humans. First, let's clarify some terminology. The term early modern human refers to fossils that have only small differences from living humans and generally refers to humans that lived around 100,000 to 50,000 years ago. The term anatomically modern human or fully modern human refer to human fossils that are indistinguishable from living modern humans. This is very different from what are called early Homo sapiens, or archaic Homo sapiens, which have archaic features such as a more elongated brain case and larger brow ridges and mandibles. According to the most recent study, Omo One has features that suggest this skeleton belonged to a tall, robust, childbearing age early modern human woman. Regressions based on femoral head diameter in modern human models estimate the Omo 1 stature to be 171 to 184 centimeters, and using the estimated femoral head diameter, the predicted body mass is about 73.9 kilos. For Americans, that means she was a biological female around 6 feet tall and had a body mass of 160 pounds. Omo 1 was an almost partial set of remains, consisting of a very fragmented skull, pelvis, and long bones. On the other hand, Omo 2, found very near Omo 1, lacked any skeletal remains, but had a more complete cranium. Initial analysis suggested that these fossils could be among the earliest known examples of Homo sapiens, which sparked widespread excitement in the scientific community. The Omo 1 fossil, in particular, was notable for its modern-looking skull and pelvic bones, which would become central to debates over the nature and classification of early human fossils. Omo One's skull was discovered in very fragmented condition, and many parts were missing or damaged. Paleoanthropologists set about reconstructing it, using various comparative methods to fill in the gaps, using the best technology available in 1982. Omo One was identified as a member of our species, Homo sapiens, based on the shape and size of its skull. The cranial capacity was estimated to be around 1,200 cubic centimetres, about the same as average modern human woman. One of the most distinguishing characteristics of the Omo One skull is its high, rounded cranium and relatively small brow ridges, which are consistent with anatomically modern human features. Another distinguishing feature of the Homo sapiens skull is its prominent chin, according to Leakey. These characteristics set Omo One apart from other skull including Jebel Irhud, sometimes called the oldest Homo sapiens, which had a thicker skull, more prominent brow ridge, and a more rounded brain case. Jebel Irhud is considered an archaic Homo sapiens, not a modern Homo sapiens, 
a very important distinction. Despite these so-called modern features, some aspects of the Omo-1 skull appear archaic, prompting speculation about whether it represented a true modern human or a transitional form between earlier hominids and Homo sapiens. These debates are fueled by the discovery of Omo-2, which had a much more archaic-looking skull. This raised the question of whether the two individuals, Omo-1 and Omo-2, were from different species or part of a single, highly variable early human population. Some researchers now doubt the providence of Omo-2, suggesting it is much older than Omo-2, in order to account for these differences. For decades after the discovery of Omo-1, scientists assumed that the individual was male, owing to the robust nature of the skeleton. However, in recent years, a reanalysis of the pelvic bones yielded an unexpected result. Omo-1 was most likely female. This also raises questions about the accuracy of the skull reconstruction, because when the skull was reconstructed in 1982, it was assumed to be male and only 100,000 years old, and was therefore modelled after similar age skulls, such as those from School and Kafsa Caves in the Levant. Most recently, the skull has been dated to between 195,000 and 230,000 years. However, critics say the so-called modern-looking rounded shape of the skull may have been due to deformation during fossilization, and the jawbone reconstruction is highly subjective as well. The angle of the jaw greatly influences the projection of the chin, so we don't truly know if she had a projecting chin or a chin that was more sloped. Archaic females have a much more gracile appearance, as can be seen in several female Neanderthal skulls, and so the smaller brow ridges could also be a feminine characteristic. This means that the skull may not be as modern-looking as it is reconstructed, which is striking because it looks as modern as skulls that are only 50,000 years old, and there is nothing remotely similar in the fossil record from 200,000 years ago. The pelvis is one of the most reliable indicators of biological sex in human skeletal remains, as the shape and size of the pelvic bones are influenced by childbirth demands. As mentioned, closer examination of the Omo-1 pelvis revealed female-specific characteristics, such as a wide subpubic angle and a broad, rounded pelvic inlet. These characteristics are adaptations for giving birth to relatively large-brained infants. The size and shape of the pelvis evolved in accordance with the larger brain sizes in Homo sapiens. The Omo-1 fossil also provides important information about the physical stature of early Homo sapiens. Paleoanthropologists have estimated Omo-1's height to be nearly six feet tall, based on the long bones and the diameter of her shattered and tibia femur. This height is consistent with other early Homo sapiens fossils from Africa, which are generally taller than most modern humans living today. Omo-1's body mass estimates suggest she weighed around 160 pounds, though this is a rough estimate due to the incomplete nature of the remains. This body mass, combined with her height, suggests that Omo-1 was relatively lean, as would be expected of a hunter-gatherer living in a warm climate, such as southern Ethiopia during the Pleistocene. This contrasts with cold-weather Neanderthals, who had larger body mass and strength to handle the cold climate and ambush hunting techniques. While the Omo-1 fossil is widely regarded as significant in the study of human evolution, it has not been without controversy. One of the most contentious issues surrounding the Omo-1 fossil is its age. Based on the stratigraphy of the Omo-Kibish formation, the fossil was initially estimated to be around 100,000 years old. However, this estimate was later revised as more sophisticated dating techniques became available. In fact, a team of researchers used radiometric dating methods to re-examine the volcanic ash layers surrounding the fossil, concluding that Omo-1 was significantly older than previously thought. Their findings indicated that the fossil was at least 195,000 years old, making it one of the oldest known examples of anatomically modern humans. This discovery pushed back the timeline for the emergence of Homo sapiens and supported the theory that modern humans evolved in Africa. If indeed, Omo-1 is a modern human. However, not all scientists agreed on the new date. Some argued that the dating methods used were flawed, while others cited the Omo-2 skull's archaic features 
as evidence that the fossils represented a more primitive form of man. The debate over the age and classification of Homo I continues to this day, with some researchers claiming that the fossil is older than 230,000 years, while others argue for a more conservative estimate. An age of 230,000 years or more would also throw another wrench in the reconstruction because this age would push back fully modern humans much too far back in time. The environment would have been abundant with resources, such as wild plants, animals, and freshwater sources like the nearby Omo River. Life during this time would have been physically demanding and dangerous. Large predators such as lions and hyenas roamed the landscape, and competition for resources with other hominid groups was probably fierce. Omo One would have had to rely on her environmental knowledge, social connections, and the tools her group developed to survive. Omo One most likely lived in a landscape with shifting environments. Weather fluctuations during the Pleistocene would have affected vegetation, water availability, and animal populations. These changes would have required her group to be adaptable, moving to new locations in search of food and shelter. Omo One's discovery is also critical in the ongoing debate over the mitochondrial Eve theory, which is one of the most contentious hypotheses in human evolutionary genetics. According to the mitochondrial Eve theory, all modern humans have a common maternal ancestor who lived in Africa 200,000 years ago. This woman, known as mitochondrial Eve, is not the first or only woman alive at the time, but rather the most recent common ancestor of all living humans through the maternal line, as determined by mitochondrial DNA. The discovery of a theoretical mitochondrial Eve via genetic studies in the 1980s was a watershed moment in human evolutionary biology. By analyzing the mitochondrial DNA of living populations all over the world, researchers were able to trace all living humans back to a single woman from Africa. This lent strong support to the out-of-Africa model of human evolution, which holds that modern humans originated in Africa and then spread around the world, replacing or interbreeding with other hominid species. The relationship between Omo I and mitochondrial Eve highlight East Africa's significance in the story of human evolution. The fossil record from sites such as the Omo Kibish Formation and other East African locations provides compelling evidence that Homo sapiens evolved in Africa, supporting the findings of mitochondrial DNA studies. Omo I and other early Homo sapiens fossils help to contextualize the genetic evidence supporting the mitochondrial Eve theory. The physical remains of these early humans show that by 200,000 years ago, people with fully modern human anatomy were living in Africa, the same region where genetic evidence suggests our common maternal ancestor lived. Omo One's discovery transformed our understanding of human origins, revealing early evidence of modern Homo sapiens. Her poorly preserved skull, combined with a reanalysis of her pelvis, has provided critical insights into the biology and behavior of our ancient ancestors. However, the debates over the dating and classification of Omo One continue to fuel scientific debates, highlighting the complexities of reconstructing our evolutionary past. Omo One was more than just a fossil. She lived and breathed in a world very different from ours. As we learn more about her life and the environment in which she lived, we gain a greater appreciation for early human resilience and adaptability, which enabled our species to survive and thrive for hundreds of thousands of years. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. And before you go, please share, comment, and check out the other videos on our channel. Thank you and take care.